Hey everybody, back with the Smarter Sculpted Physique podcast, and today my guest is Rachel Cosgrove, owner of Result Fitness. Uh, Rachel, thanks for jumping on board, taking the time. I know you're busy, so. Thanks for having me. I'm always trying to get more female content, so uh, especially among the experts, which I'd like to talk to you about uh, further on down the line. But um, let me just introduce you for people who've been living under a rock for the last little while. <laughs> So the owner of Results Fitness, your 2012 IDEA Personal Trainer of the Year, correct? Yep. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a pretty prestigious uh, thing. A columnist for Women's Health Magazine, Huffington Post, Nike, author of the Female Body Breakthrough and Drop Two Sizes, and you guys recently, 19th anniversary of Results Fitness, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I can't believe it's been 19 years, but yep. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not our, our baby's to... 19 years old. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to give away your age or anything, but that's uh, that's spectacular. And and you know, I mean, for me, I've been telling people I've been in the physique transformation game for four plus decades. So you, you start recognizing these milestones as important after a little while. So. Oh yeah, I mean, it's yeah, you got to be proud of you know still being in this industry, right? <laughs> yeah, <Not> I mean. <laughs> As we were talking about offline there, it's like a, a young person's game with social media and stuff. So to mm -hmm. uh, have tenure, you know, um, in this day and age is, I think, separates the experts from the wannabes or the pretenders. Although in the younger generation, the pretenders can tend to win at that game because they know <laughs> how to manipulate social media. But uh, you guys, have, you've expanded three times. Is that right? We have expanded. We actually just... Um four times in the same location. So um, yeah, our is about 6,000 square feet, put in a juice bar and, um, over the years. And then we actually just recently this year expanded across the street and took over a space um, where we do a lot of our educational seminars. So um, so we have wow. a teaching space as well. Yeah, wow. so, so it's, so I guess. All, all my listeners check out Results Fitness. Um, I'm sure you have a .com site, right? Yeah, results-fitness.com is our gym and then, um, yeah, and then okay. my name too, rachelcosgrove.com. Yeah, and we'll put all your info. I mean, when I had Alan on um, on the podcast a long time ago, I mean, he was talking about, uh, you know, imitation being the sincerest form of flattery and people were trying to pop up around you guys and, and sort of be your competition. And, uh, you know, I know a little bit what that's like. So um, obviously didn't uh, hurt you guys or put a dent in what you're doing, which again, illustrates a level of expertise, I think, right? Staying power. So um, how, how did that transform? It's been a while since I had Alan on. So um, he was just, you know, it, it reminds me, I just watched the trailers for uh, Netflix for the new uh, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. And at, at the very end of it, I don't know how much you know about Seinfeld in real life, but he just really resonates as a real, like, tell it like it is kind of thing. Yeah. And so at the end of the trailer for the upcoming season, he does a whole thing about, look, uh, if you're going to copy what we do, and he does this whole, like, about 30 of these shows that are so-and-so in, you know, in cars getting coffee or, you know, going right. for walks and all this other stuff. He says, you know, at least do it right. <laughs> so <laughs> it just reminded me, you know, again, imitation, the most sincere form of flattery. But you guys obviously weathered that storm, if it was even a storm. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's part of any of us, you know, when you're leading in the industry, you just keep leading, right? You just keep your nose to the grindstone and keep, you know, moving forward. And, um, but, but yeah, I think, you know, anytime you're doing something, you know, that's great, um, you're going to have people that are going to follow in your footsteps. And um, definitely when we first opened 19 years ago, we were like the only game in town as far as small gyms and what we were doing and, you know, the, the programming we were doing and the, um, you know, really working with in a smaller environment. It was, our only competition was really bigger gyms, you know, it was these big right. box gyms and it was nothing like what we were doing. And um, so definitely over the last, I'd say seven years, um, you know, we've had everything from, yeah, gyms open that named themselves, you know, after products that we had, you know, <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute, you know, that's, that's the same, you know, that's us, you know, but it's, you know, it's like, okay. Um, oh, like you that's, said, that's, <laughs> that's really tacky though. Um, but you, yeah, you know, you go, you roll with it. And, and um, now, you know, there's, there's more competition now. I mean, so that's the cool part for, I think the general population is, there's more competition than there ever has been as far as small gyms, personal trainers, um, finding the best, you know, I think there's so much um, information out there and it's actually, um, you have your pick, you know, so um, may, be picky and find the best. And, you yeah, know, but I do, think you think that, do you really think that's a good thing? Because, uh, you know, I've been on several rants on how it's sort of, 
dumbing down the expertise level. It's not getting better. It's getting watered down, diluted, dumbed down. Like, you know, I talk about this with JC Santana a few times as well. It's just like people don't really know how to discern what an expert is from, you know, what a chess yeah. founder is anymore. Yeah. Well, that's like what I was leading to. I think um, because like you're saying, there's so much information and people are, um, clients are coming in more educated than ever, maybe not educated with the right things, but you know, they're coming in with educate, you know, they've been reading stuff, they've been following stuff, they've been, you know, they come in very educated. And so, um, you know, as a gym, like, it, I think it's a good thing because they can be picky and they can find people that do know what they're talking about. And so that's, you know, it's easy to stand out when you are, you know, when you do know what you're talking about, when you are um, leading in the industry and when, uh, you know, you're definitely doing the things that are going to be, that are going to make you stand out from the rest. But, I, you know, there's definitely a lot more competition now. So it's, you know, you have to do, you have to, you have to know what you're talking about in order to stand out. And I think it's a good, I, I don't mind competition because I feel like it makes us better, you know, it's it's easy to get lazy when you don't have competition. Um, yeah, I just find it, um, you know, uh, I guess a little different with the one-on-one -on -one coaching and stuff. I still find the general consumer doesn't know the difference between the sizzle and the steak. So yeah. unless unless they're hearing someone speak at an actual conference or a symposium or something like that, then they still have trouble discerning the difference between the next shiny new object and what's tried and proven effective. So, uh, yeah, we're, we differ a little bit on there, but, um, yeah, well, and so, I think that's, yeah, where it's our job, right. To get the information out there. So. Well, sometimes, I mean, information out there is speaking of imitation, sincere form of flattery. I get copied on social media all the time. I, I I've come to learn that people I'll do a social media post and someone will copy it and sit on it for a couple months and then reproduce it as their own like a couple months later and it just, <laughs> and then of course fans of mine recognize it right away and write me and go like what the hell like right, how, right. how is this allowed and it's just like <sighs> can't really stop it right all you can do is like you said just you know if you can't beat them lead them is uh you yeah. know best the best thing best so, way to go yeah you guys also have like 11 best-selling books that's right up there with mine <laughs> yeah, that's great. You know. <laughs> you're, you're consulting with Nike and Gatorade. Um, you guys were named top ten. I want to get all this in before we like, uh, you know, <laughs> rub my hands together. But top ten gym in the country several times. Um, and you, like I just said, you were you've presented all over the world, right, at uh, fitness conferences and whatnot. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. And, yeah. Been with Perform Better, um, NSCA, uh, Idea. Right? Mm -hmm. wow. Excellent. Excellent. So in other words, folks in listening and uh, you know, <laughs> we're talking expertise, we're talking qualifications, etc. So I wrote a couple things down. Um, so all these like 19 years and, and over the course of those years, this is something I'm, I often play in my mind. What changes have you seen for the better in the industry that you're you're happy to see? Is it what one of the things we just talked about, all the level of competition and stuff or... Um, one of my favorite changes is women that are not scared to lift weights anymore. Uh, I think that's one of the best things that's happened is um, and more and more, not all of them, but, um, you know, I'm definitely seeing where when we first opened 19 years ago to, you know, to um, encourage a woman to lift heavier weights and to not be scared to strength train um, because she was afraid she was going to get big and bulky. That was, you know, um, very right. like a, a common conversation, like constantly that was the conversation. Um, now I have, we have so many more women that come in that are wanting to get strong and, you know, they're wanting to lift weights and they're, you know, they realize that, you know, it's just really cool to see the um, shift, you know, which is always been my vision of what I wanted to, you know, like with my first book, I was, I, you know, I talk about how I have this vision of, I want to walk in and see instead of the women all on the treadmills and in the aerobics classes, I want to see them all on the strength training floor. And it's really awesome to, you know, really see that's, I think one of my favorite changes that's happened. Yeah. Since we've, you know, opened our gym is, um, the conversations are different. You know, the women are coming in ready to lift weights. And yeah, you've had been leaders in that way. I mean, uh, one, you know, one of the books from, you and or Alan, I don't even know how to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> divide you two up, but you know, the new rules of lifting for women, right? I mean, that was Lou Schuler and Alan, right? Yeah, but, it was not me. Yeah, everyone thinks right. it was my book, but yeah, it was him. It's him and uh, actually um, Cassandra Forsyth. Um, so it was the three of right. them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great book. Yeah. 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 And it goes, it goes back to then when things were shifting toward that. And then mm -hmm. I think 
you know, other things like CrossFit games and whatnot got people into uh, that kind of thing. What, what same similar question, but the flip side of that coin, what changes do you wish you could see, but you haven't seen, or they've actually gotten worse? Oh, good question. Um, I mean, I, you know, we're always trying to, it's like you said, it's the, you know, the, the professional the level of professionalism in our industry is the main thing that frustrates me and Alan, um, because that's always so the lack our, of it, the lack yeah, of it, the lack of the, the, yeah, us not being seen as professionals. And I think I forget because I live in our bubble of at results fitness and we're, you know, we, we strive to set a standard. We, you know, we, um, you know, we were, we're professionals. We, um, dress like professionals. We act like professionals. We, you know, we set boundaries like professionals and, you know, that's who we are and that's what we do. And it's always been part of our, um, you know, our vision is to like, we have always had the mission of changing the way fitness is done. And part of that mission is to, um, you know, for people to start to see a fitness, pro fitness professional as a professional, you know, that you don't tell somebody you're a personal trainer and they're like, Oh, that's cool. Like, what do you do on the, you know, what do you do for real work? Um, <laughs> and so, um, you know, I think that's still not there yet. Um, I think sometimes I think it is. And then, you know, I hear stories of trainers that, or I see things that are posted or, you know, oh. I, and I, and it's like, Oh, we're not there yet. We still have work to do. <laughs> and, and, oh. I mean, there's, um, so, there's so much social media pretension in that regard as well. Right. Because, you know, I have clients and I've had clients who, you know, hang their shingle on their personal trainers or whatever. And they're, they're trying to make it appear that they have all these clients and they have like two or three clients, you know, they're just like maybe like a, a homemaker or whatever doing personal training on the side. But you know, it's, they're not who they represent themselves out to be. So that goes back to my thing about I think it's the actual expertise is getting more and more diluted. Not I don't you know, the cream will always right. rise to the top. But if we keep diluting the base, you know, then the cream doesn't have to rise that far. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, nope. there's definitely more Internet experts, you know, that um, there didn't used to be all of that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. And so that's a, you know, for an old part like me, that's hard to uh, navigate all that because, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm not social media savvy and I'm not really social media interested. I'm, you know, I'm not uh, interested in what other people are up to. But uh, on the consumer side, and then I wanted to ask you on the professional side, but before I forget, on the consumer side, what do you wish would change that hasn't changed or has gotten worse? Like amongst amongst the people you see, not the professional part, but. Right. Um, um, I mean, I think definitely the accessibility to information that's confusing, <laughs> you know, and I think they're just getting bombarded every day with information that's not necessarily true or right or, um, you know, and it's confusing. I mean, it's, you know, it can be definitely a much more, you know, heading down different paths, you know, and a lot of people, you know, get um, just, it's overwhelming, you know, the amount of for, you know, for any of us, people on their phones, people, you know, like, it's like, there's so much information constantly. And I think that's the hardest thing for the consumer now. Yeah, the challenge used to be learning. Now it seems to be unlearning. Um, yeah, you know. well, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, being able to filter through and find what is the real information that really works. So yeah, yeah they're, they're pinballing all over the place with, you know, and one of the ways that the neophyte expert is trying to make a reputation or a name for themselves, of course, is, well, twofold. Um, one is jump on board whatever the shiny new object is, so you'll gather recruitment that way. And the other one is just be a contrarian. So if Rachel Cosgrove and, and Alan Cosgrove and Scott Abel are saying white, then you say black, you know, right. just to, yeah. because that'll, you know, that'll gin up. It'll get some, it'll get a lot of likes. Yeah, <laughs> look at a lot of action, that, right? <laughs> and then that gets people thinking yeah. they're paying attention to the right thing, and you know. But yeah. Einstein always said information is not knowledge, and I think that's a trap for the modern consumer because they think they're gaining knowledge by acquiring information, right? And yeah. so that's you know, information is just it lacks context. So you know, if if it's not knowledge then information like information not being knowledge is just you can accumulate all the information in the world but if you don't have a primer to understand it and it's like memorizing the alphabet doesn't help you if you don't understand the rules of grammar and vowels and consonants and punctuation right. and so they're they're gathering all this information thinking that it makes them more knowledgeable when you know 
knowledge is one thing, but applied knowledge is, you know, right. what matters the most. So, yeah. And that's, uh, I think, yeah, like what, that's what we see is people coming in just, they know a lot. <laughs> but you know, like as far yeah, as information, do. I don't like, think they. I don't think they do okay. that a lot. I think yeah. I think they can parrot a lot. Right. You know, they yeah. can parrot a lot of concepts, and they can parrot a lot of, uh, right. you know. That's what I mean. They come in with yeah a lot of information right. that they don't know what to do with it or how to you know they they think they know what you know it's it's definitely a um, yeah it's overwhelming for the consumer. And one of the things that you know. My own side of answering that question: What changes do I wish would change, but haven't changed, and have gotten even worse? For me, is women and body image and eating disorders, and you know, I left the world of physique competition because when I was immersed in it at the highest levels, that's when figure was just coming on board and stuff, and I started training all these ladies and witnessed firsthand how formerly healthy individuals developed eating disorders and I mean and I mean severe and body image issues and stuff and now of course with the insta influencers and all this yeah um it's gotten you know and I deal with a lot of ladies with those issues metabolic damage eating disorders combinations of both um you must have thoughts on that being <laughs> being yeah. a woman dealing mm -hmm. with women I'm um, do you do you see it do you not see it do you do you navigate it? Do you just sort of ignore it? How do you deal with it? Yeah, um, I mean, the target population that we mo work mostly with is 40 and up. So it's not as bad in that population. I think definitely in the younger population, um, you know, they're, it's, it, you're absolutely right. It's worse. Uh, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I, cause I had an eating disorder and I didn't, oh, I didn't have, know yeah, it's partly like it's in my book, my first book, I talk about my journey of, um, you know, similar, you know, going through. I mean, I got into figure comp fitness competitions and figure competitions and went down that path. And um, what a rabbit know, hole, right? Yeah, what and I, you know, it was before that that I had um, the eating disorder, but that obviously didn't help it. Um, but figuring out, you know, um, well, you can know, I just start? Can journey. I just interrupt you right there? Because sure. one of the things I wrote about in one of my books is, um, the mutual attraction what we call a mutual affinity between both so someone with a body image issue is attracted to figure competition and they end up with an eating disorder and someone with an eating disorder is attracted to figure competition and they end right. up with a body image issue so they tend to attract each other in very unhealthy ways anyway i didn't mean to, <laughs> no that's interesting that yeah so yeah anyway, go ahead yeah it's interesting i mean and it's the same thing i think with like um uh, like cosmetic surgery, you know, like you see so many women, I see so many women in California, you know, come in oh, with, <laughs> it's like, you know, they come in with, they already ha yeah, have these, you know, their, these issues with their body image and um, their self image. Um, and then they keep trying to fix themselves, you know, through whether it's surgery or, you know, diets or um, whatever it might be. And it's like, in, re never realizing that, you know, you got to be happy who you are right now today before you can, you know, really, then you, you know, we, we can always want to get better. Like that's not a, if you want to get stronger, you want to get fitter, you want to get, you know, that's fine, but you can't always think that's going to be the key to your happiness, you know? And so it's definitely yeah. a tough path. That's interesting that you're right. I mean, I think because they're seeking happiness, they're seeking, you know, that, um, fulfillment and well, two, yeah, two, two things there. I've said in my empowered woman, um, course, I, um, you know, the, the thinking, the faulty thought pattern is, and it's in my book, The Anti-Diet Approach as well, but the mindset is when I lose 30 pounds, then I can be happy. And the actual truth is, no, when you're happy, then you can lose 30 pounds. Exactly. There isn't, yeah. a, there isn't a professional athlete at the highest level on the planet who doesn't believe in themselves first. They don't, right. have, to, they don't have to prove it to believe in themselves. Right. You know, they already have the belief in themselves and then they perform better. So um, it's trying to impart that mess. Now, the cosmetic surgery, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but it's a, favorite, <laughs> it's a favorite topic of mine because it's related to the whole body image thing. Are, were, yeah. are you familiar? About five or six years ago, there was a trend in cosmetic surgery that I talked about in my Empowered Woman course. And empowering women is a big thing for me, too, believe it or not. But... Um, down in your area in California, one of the most popular surgeries five or six years ago was women were getting bones shaved off their feet so they could fit into Jimmy Choo shoes. Oh, my gosh. Did, were you aware of that? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 
that um, corresponded to what I was writing about, you know, oppression of women and stuff, because it was so eerily similar to the practice of uh, in China of um, foot binding. So in China, hundreds of years ago, smaller feet was sexy, right? It was like the breast implants right. of that era. <laughs> so they would bind ladies' feet. And then when they matured and got older, they were completely deformed. They couldn't walk. They oh couldn't, but they would do, they would submit to it or not have a choice to submit to it in order to be, to be beautiful, attractive yeah. for right. another man, right? So right. then we see this women getting bones shaved off their feet to fit into Jimmy Choo shoes rather than writing Jimmy Choo and say, make bigger shoes. Make bigger shoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. you know, like we, we keep sort of degrading and downgrading women's ideal of, of what's attractive, what, what they need to do. Um, and then we wonder why they, women have so many like self image issues. Cause when body image becomes self image, that's an illness. That's how I've looked at it from the right. beginning. Right? Oh, it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I think there's definitely strong, there's more and more strong role models for women and it's um, in that aspect, it's getting better. But like you said, I don't, I know that the social media world is not healthy for any of the teenagers growing up. I mean, I couldn't imagine growing up with the, you know, the things that I was dealing with then, you know, as in, you know, in high school and in college, um, and then to have all of these images that you look at every single day of people looking a certain way, uh, it, yeah, it, it, like, it has to. Yeah, just, and, then, and there's, you know. there's now, there's now direct um, psychological studies that show the longer people stay on social media, the, the more that correlates with levels of depression. Yeah. So you know. Um, yeah. But uh, speaking of empowering women and and women role models, I mean, we'd be remiss given the current uh wave you know the women u.s women's soccer team big deal or no deal oh i think it's a big deal i love it i i loved i mean i watched the whole thing and <laughs> i i love um abby wambach's new book uh wolf pack i don't know if you've read it yet but um no. so no. abby wambach is one of the ex she played um she didn't play this season but um she's one of the players and i got to meet her actually at one point she's um she wrote a book called wolf pack and it's about um you know their team but also about women becoming her whole thing is like instead of being um little red riding hood like we grew up being told that we should be little red riding hood <laughs> yeah. and she's like no we're the wolf like as a, wolf. like as a woman be the wolf and find your wolf pack like you're you know right. your women who are going to support you and who um and i just think it's like um it's the coolest so yeah all the women in my life you know we've all like been reading that book and like we're all like yeah we're, you know we're the wolf pack you know and so i think it's just is a really cool thing and to watch them win the world cup and you know just see them all supporting each other um all you know different people right like there's on that team you have different you know sure. body types different looks different every you know different everything and it's just it's cool to see them all be a wolf pack you know be um supportive of each other and to win you know because you can't win a world cup without being a strong team you know and being connected to each other so i think it's a really cool example of women supporting each other and strong women um you know and that's what they're getting a lot of attention for, right? Is that they're like speaking up and they're making demands and they're having a voice and, you know, their, their team element, you know, there's no I in team is, is obviously authentic. Uh, there's lots of, you know, professional sports teams with fractured individuals who still win championships, but this sort of has become something else, right? I mean, they yeah, won, it's, they yeah, won it's the more world. of a movement. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I yeah. was kind of getting at. So totally. yeah. So, so big deal then. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. And like I said, with, I mean, with her book, um, from what I've seen, you know, uh, it's definitely been a movement, you know, of women looking for something beyond, you know, um, their own, you know, like being hard on themselves or, you know, be, keeping themselves from being the person that they're supposed to be. And, um, and accepting themselves. So, yeah. 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 No, it's pretty cool. Agree a hundred percent. Um, getting back to the sort of fitness expertise thing and being, you know, somewhat disappointing or, you know, the, the current level, I also got, I, I mean, I just, I got to tap that. <laughs> um, I got to tap that window a little bit. Do you, do you think, because I, I'm of a firm belief in this, but, Amongst fitness experts, do you not think there's still a huge 
double standard. Um, in other words, there's fitness experts that we both know who are not unquestioned experts. No one would say, well, he's not really an expert, whatever. Right. But, but the male experts in my age, mid fifties, beyond pot bellies, middle age, you know, middle age spread, <laughs> paunches. <laughs> you don't see any female fitness experts that are allowed to have that same thing and still be acknowledged as, you know, well, she's a fitness expert because the first thing you're going to hear back is, yeah, right. You know, like, <laughs> do you think about that? Do you see it? Do you witness Honestly, it? Honestly, I don't, I've never thought about it, but um, okay. I mean, it's true. I think that's, you know, definitely a true Thing. I think about it all the time. So just, <laughs> I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to hear your perspective because, yeah, you definitely have, you know, like for a lot of the things that I, I mean, obviously for me, I've been the only female speaker at a number of conferences. Um, yeah, I've had Crystal Scott Dixon on and she's uh, said the same thing, basically, you know, yeah. like, yeah. And that's why I want more people like you guys on, on my podcast, because I mean, come on, but go ahead. <laughs> um, and I think part of that is because women aren't putting themselves out there too, you know, like they, they're, they don't have the confidence to, and that's, I want to bring out the confidence in because so many women have so much to offer and need to be on a platform, you know, um, but haven't stepped onto that platform yet because they haven't gained that confidence yet. Um, so it is, I think part of it is um, as women, you know, that's one of my missions is to help more women to, you know, realize that, Hey, you have something to offer and you need to, you know, get out there and share it because, uh, you know, you're going to have a different perspective from the other people that are out there sharing what they're doing. So, um, so part of Not it, only, I think it's that sorry. permission for women to, you know, to start to put themselves um, there, but, and I never thought about the whole body image Thing. I mean, it, I just never, it never crossed my mind. Um, so now, now that I've sort of made it, cross, <laughs> I, now that I've make it, made it cross your yeah. mind, I, I want some input on it. I mean, you kind yeah. of, you kind of skirted that and got into the empowerment. <laughs> I want to get into the double standard because yeah. there's a lot of, you know, for instance, I'm in the physique transformation game. I'm not in the strength game, but there's a lot of strength experts that are telling people how to transform their physique. It's like, wait a minute, that's not your arena. That's my right. arena. Right. So. At the same time, we see these people, you know, they're giving out maybe diet advice or whatever, and it seems to be okay for the man. You can have that niche, you can have that era, you've proven your expertise, but God forbid a woman show up at age 50, 30 pounds overweight with a middle, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I really want to challenge you and my female yeah. guests, I, wa I want you guys to address this, I want you guys to like, notice it, get, get, yeah. emotional about it get jazzed about it get like wait a minute this you know how come we have to look the part or we don't matter like so what's it's the answer do the men have to start looking the part because it's obviously the answer is not necessarily for us to gain 30 pounds and <laughs> no 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 I'm just, I'm, but, but it's i mean the double standards right there for instance for myself yeah. Because I'm in the physique transformation game, I'm not advocating powerlifting or weightlifting or anything else. So I think personally, I have to walk the talk and I do have right. to look the part, even, right. I'm, even though I'll be 58 in a month. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't want to be the expert whose you live, best yeah, you days are behind things. me. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I, if I'm yeah. going to, you know, talk the talk about diet consistency and compliance and training consistency right. and compliance, then I should look the part even at my age, right. hoping that people understand things change with age. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, uh, and I, Which I think I, it's I, the way it should be. I mean, I think that's how, you know, you should, I think, you know, most experts, you know, they, and, and you don't always know every expert's story you know so oh, when you see them like obviously you know judging what they look like is not necessarily knowing whether they've been through a health whatever you know who knows um what their own journey is maybe they've lost 150 pounds maybe you know like who knows sure. um yeah. uh so we don't always know their whole journey um i think there's not enough women to really even like i can't even think of you know and like of the number of women that i think of that speak right like i'm like well yeah they're all in shape and they all look good but there's not that many so it's it's hard to even you know look at the um comparison um but and i and obviously i don't think the answer is necessarily that you know um women need to let themselves go and <laughs> oh no no i'm not i'm not saying that i'm, I'm you know, you know prove yeah, a point but um but yeah i think you know it's it could definitely be i you know but what i'm saying what i'm saying is like if there was an expert woman who was overweight and who um knew a lot and who had you know expertise to share 
would she get the platform that she should? Would she um, have a voice? That's what I'm getting at. It's not like, okay, now women, you know, uh, yeah. the playing field, women should let themselves go too because, you know, no, no, what I'm getting at is would she even have a voice? Would she even get to speak at an event you would get to speak right. at and stuff? And and the answer is a, a certain no. And that's, I think that's limiting. And I think it's limiting on a gender basis. And I think it's bullshit. Yeah. Um, um, Sorry. And I think it's even just, well, no, and I think it's even just any woman, whether she's in shape or not in shape, is not getting that, you know, is not on the plot, not getting the voice or, the, you know, so I think it's like starting there. And then, yeah, definitely looking at, is there um, biased as far as appearance? Double, double standard. Yeah. Double. Yeah. 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 Um, um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too sensitive to that stuff, but it's funny <laughs> that you've never even thought about it. And I think about that stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I'm like so removed from, I like try not, you know, I don't put myself in those, like, I just don't compare myself to other people. I don't like, I don't really think about it. Like I don't, I, I'm not talking, I'm not talking comparison either. I'm talking yeah. about the, the, the uh, objective reality of, you know, we can't change what we don't. No, it's, it's a valid point. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, I, yeah, I'm looking at it as an observational thing that, you know, you know, that needs to change. Any industry is only as good as its leaders. And if its leaders right. aren't going to acknowledge things like a double standard, um, right. then what's going to change? Right. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I like to put that out there for. Yeah. My and I think I mean, for me, I, the only thing that, you know, we we control our environment at Results Fitness. Yeah. Um, and so when we're hiring or we're like, we have more women working for us than we do men right now, more female coaches. We have some amazing female coaches working for us and, um, and all of them have different body shapes, different sizes, different, you know, on their own journeys. Right. Like, that's always my thing. I'm like, as long as you're a work in progress, I don't care where you're at on your journey, as long as you're a work in progress. Right. So, um, and it's like, yeah, it's all, you know, depending on if they're just getting started on their fitness journey or that, you know, that, that like, if they're learning, if they're ahead of the client, you know, if like I had one of our trainers start with us and she was like super self-conscious, she's like, I don't, I can't become a coach because, you know, I had a back injury, she had back surgery and I'm not as in good a shape as I used to be. And, you know, and I'm like, you're in, you're in better shape than the average client and you can show them something and teach them something. You've been on a journey, you know, and it's having that confidence. And she was like, Oh, I never thought about it like that. Thinking she had to be at this peak, you know, like you're saying, like putting this pressure that's on what, herself, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking. Peak, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like condition in order to be able to be a fitness coach. And I, you know, I, I told her like, no, you are. And she already was in great shape. She had already come back, made her come back from her back surgery was working out was already an example of, you know, what most women want to be. Um, and so it was, it was cool to see she's one of our coaches now, but, um, you know, she's gaining that, you know, she gained that confidence of, oh, okay, now I realize I just have to be further along on the journey than, you know, the client that I'm working with, but I don't need to be at, you know, standing on stage in a bikini ripped, <laughs> like, you know, that's not necessary in order to help somebody. And so, um, yeah, I think, you know, because you know, working at Results Fitness is definitely part of our philosophy. I don't, you know, it's not something that we um, even consider is, you know, like, oh, well, your body fat's too high. You can't be a coach here. Like, I don't even think about that. I, I do think about, are you, what, what journey are you on? Are you going to work out here? You know, you got to be working out on our program. You got to be practicing what you preach. You got to be a good example of what we do. Um, and I think more, you know, more people should, that's sh the way it should be. Um, and well, they, yeah, but that's an but, interesting, yeah, I, I'd never thought about it as far as I hear all the time about, you know, women not getting to speak, you know, at some of the conferences and things. And, um, and I try to encourage as many women as possible to apply to speak because I don't think they get as many applications from women. Um, well, here's, you know, here's another, here's another sort of <laughs> perspective. Fly. <laughs> fly in the ointment okay the ones the ones who do get to speak when the posters come out of who's speaking how many of them are shown in a bikini versus the men right. who speak right. like just you know for okay and, we but have that's these... the woman sending that picture in though i know but i know but that's yeah. that's that's representative of how endemic yeah. the problem is right, right. so she thinks uh, she has to send a picture in in yeah you know looking all sports bra and whatever um which yeah, you yeah. don't see the man with his shirt. I mean, rarely. Yeah, you, know, you get you get honey, the, <laughs> yeah. the male experts I'm talking about. You get face shots, right? Like yeah. you know, and they can look however they look, and no one doubts their expertise. But the female thinks, you know, I gotta, I, I you know, my expertise, I gotta show from the neck down. Right. You know, and, but and that's probably partly pressure that women put on themselves. You know. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, yeah. there, there there's this old myth. Um, 
you know, uh, um, amongst how people think that that women do all this uh, for the attention of men, but no, women do all this for the attention of each other. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and and a lot of people still don't understand that, right? So there's right. a there's an old feminist quote that men look at women, women look at themselves being looked at. And it's not like, it's not, so it's not reverse. Men look at women. Women don't necessarily look at men. Women look at themselves knowing that everyone's looking at them. Like comparing themselves to the other women. Yeah. Like, yeah. Compare, yeah. contrast, compete are the three deadly, you know, yeah. what I call the deadly sins of female uh, body image problems, right? All the females that I help with eating disorders and body image problems, almost always my lead in will be they'll mention something or someone on social media who looks okay. a certain way or says a certain thing. I'm like, and then they're they, down that rabbit hole. They're in the compare, contrast, compete, right? Then it's like um, the psychological term is Facebook envy. It's actual, yeah. it's an actual neurosis. An actual. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. so that, and women tend to do that a lot more than men do because men have the freedom not to do that. Right. right? right. And a lot of them still will, but, um, not to the level of having it socialized into them at a very young age, which I think brings us back to the female, um, to the U.S. women's soccer team, where it's just like, you know what, the times are changing. <laughs> they right? are, yeah. And it's, so, yeah, the more that, women that start to, you know, join that movement, I think it's going to be pretty powerful, you know, as as they do realize their potential and do realize, you know, that, and I, and I, you know, people always ask like, why don't you guys have a women's only gym? And I'm like, no, like we need men too. Like, I think it's, you know, there's everybody brings something to the table. Like it's, you know, I think it's um, that women could bring something more to the fitness industry that we don't currently have by getting more involved and taking that platform. And, you know, it could definitely, you know, be even better, you know, with more women stepping I mean, up. Just using the, U.S. women's soccer team, again, as the example, um, you know, kudos to you for not falling into that. Yeah, we should have a women's only gym because once again, then we fall into the gender trap, right? So all this stuff outside of fitness is going on with gender identity and gender politics and stuff like this should be a vehicle to realize the individual, right? It's a gender right. Like right. gender shouldn't enter into it. So as soon as we start making it about that, then we we feed that monster, right? More right. and more and more, right? So you, I mean, you're absolutely right. Men, women, trans, whatever. Like, you know, <laughs> let's come, all just be our best. Yeah, yeah. Come <laughs> work out and and you know, um, find yourself. Because I've I've always looked at, I've always felt like a bit of an enigma in my approach to all this when I was in bodybuilding, and especially. Um, you know, in the hardcore days, I wasn't about competing to beat somebody. I was always about physique performance art. I always wanted to like pose to me. You can see like on my YouTube channel, like old guest posings that I did to, you know, like four, four or five minutes long choreographed to music and like physique as performance art was the thing. It wasn't about getting on stage to be looked at and ogled by everyone and go, oh, well, wow, you're so wonderful and you beat so-and-so. Um, that's when it all went to shit for me. Like when, <laughs> when you got involved in all that stuff, who had a bigger arm and who had a leaner abs and, right. uh, and that's really still manifesting with the women. But my, what I was going to get at is what the fitness journey can be beyond the externals is I, I always looked at it from a very young age before I had the words to express this, but I always said my workout, because people would say, well, you go in the gym all the time. Why don't you, you know, do you play golf? No, I don't play golf. Do you ski? No, I don't ski. Well, why don't you do these things? Because the reason you do those things and what you get out of them, that's what I get out of working out. And I've, all, <laughs> yeah, I've always said, you know, a workout can be that place where you go where everything becomes your nothing for a little while and that nothing becomes your everything. And within that time, that's where you lose yourself and find yourself at the it's exact like a, time. Yeah. And, like a meditation. And, yeah. Yeah. Like a form of self connection. And mm -hmm. if, if you're always focused on the externals, then, you know, the likelihood of someone without an athletic background and self connected activity, the likelihood of them ever finding that soulful element is, you know, is going to get less and less and less, right? If it's if it's always about the weight scale or, right? You know, like how many endless apps do people have to have now to function, right? Like, <laughs> you know, if, yeah. 
it's, uh, it's crazy. Now there's sleep apps and there's like, yeah, there's well, meditation I, apps, there's sleep apps, there's yeah. Food tracking app. There's <laughs> yeah, I, I, everything we do is tracked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine that, um, leading to a sense of freedom, personal freedom, <laughs> you know, like if anything, yeah. it's, like, uh, it's what I call life behind the thin cage. Right. Um, I have so many clients who, have helped transform or they've come to me from a transformation experience. So they've lost 80, 90, hundred pounds or whatever, but they're still living life inside the thin cage. And what I mean by that is they've traded in big, thick, fat, old steel bars with a whole bunch of shiny new little thin bars, but they're still behind that cage trying to get out and trying they don't realize out, yeah. it because now they're prisoners to calorie counting and grams counting and macros. And you know, like it's just, you know what? Life's too short to that, yeah. and that's not how you find yourself and be yourself and yeah. know yourself. Like that, that's that <laughs> takes you further and further away right. from that. I mean, that's my. Uh, what's no, your- I agree absolutely. I I think it goes too far down the road of. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I like, it, I always like, it's like a spectrum of, you know, people are nutritional freestyling and eating whatever they want, whenever they want. And then they all of a sudden want to jump to counting their mac- macros and, <laughs> you know, every morsel that goes in their mouth. And I'm like, well, why don't we just like drink some water and <laughs> see yeah. how that feels, you know, <laughs> like, oh, okay. And so that's, I mean, that's our approach is yeah, one habit at a time. Like, let's just, let's just start a new habit. Let's just maybe, you know, eat some breakfast. That's not a donut. And then we can go from there, you know? So um, I think a lot of people think, you know, because of uh, starting with how our conversation started of all the information that's out there, or their friend, you know, is counting macros or their, you know, this or that, that they want to jump from where they are to, you know, this like super. Yeah, a, a to, they want to, they think they can go from A to Z. Yeah. And then they're never going to be able to like maintain it or sustain it for the long term. It's just going to be a short term thing that they're going to. Yeah. lose some weight and think that this is the answer and then they're gonna you know be done with it and then rebound but this whole industry is driven by short-term windows of attention right this whole industry is driven by 12-week transformation contests yeah. and you know Short-term, like yeah, yeah like yeah. no no one's looking at that person like uh, i always say you know the person celebrated on instagram or whatever for their transformation and, and the whatever contest is like let's not look at them 12 weeks later let's look at them 12 months later yeah. You know, let's look yeah. at them 24 months later, because then what you're going to see is before and after and really after, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. and uh, again, we're not solving what, you know, what yeah. you just said, which is something I preach all the time is what's sustainable, you know, right. long term, you know, so, okay, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with the biggest loser study, but it backed up what I've been saying for years before the science was there. It's this, you know, what's achievable doesn't really matter it's how it's achieved so you know we know now from the biggest loser study that their metabolisms were compromised even five years later after dieting right yeah. and they now have a very very tiny window within which they can consume calories without gaining weight so wow. we should be optimizing metabolism not compromising metabolism but yeah. again when we get into compare contrast compete um then it's all oh you know this so is the so quick way food. yeah yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I read one of the things you said, which you know, sort of right up my alley. We both sh- shoot for a drama-free zone, but <laughs> the problem is the consumers don't often know the difference. How do you bridge that gap? Uh, for a drama-free zone. Yeah, like I noticed, uh, I forget which post it was that you written, yeah. wrote, but it was basically like, you know, a carbon copy of stuff I say all the time. Like, you know, if you want the truth, I'll give you the truth. The problem right. is, you know, you can't handle the truth. Right. Um, <laughs> and, but I don't do drama. Uh, I usually attach yeah. the word mama to it because that's usually female. So drama mama. <laughs> but yeah. um, I noticed you said one of the same things like, you know, hey, I don't do drama if you want the real deal. Right. This this is where it this is where it lies. Um, so how do you bridge that gap when they come to you and they think they want a drama free, um, you know, experience, but everything they say or do or how they act reflects that really they don't understand what that even means. Like, do you? How do you bridge? So that? I mean, it starts bigger with the environment at Results Fitness. So we have like the entire environment is drama free, gossip free, complaint free. 
So if you say something negative about yourself, somebody's going to jump on you, <laughs> like be like, oh, okay. hey, you know, you know, like it's pretty like, you know, like we're we walk through these doors and this is a supportive, positive environment. Right. So it's like a bigger um, like it starts there with our culture. Like we just have that, you know, that's part of the culture. And I guard that culture because it's that's this is the place where and you know where women can come in and men can come in and anybody can come in and they know there's no judgments you know there's doesn't matter where you're at and where you want to go and you know like what you doesn't matter right like I don't care um, and you know we don't allow any you know there's no like you know discussion that's going to lead to anybody you know turning into turning into a negative discussion right um, and it's not always easy. I was going to say, how, how, how on earth can you manage? <laughs> um, it's not always easy with women. Um, so it's, you know, it does take, it, it takes some, you know, like you always have to, and, and I think it's, you know, over time, we've been open 19 years. And so it's something that has cultivated over the years. And, and we have clients that have been with us since day one. So they've yeah, been me members for 19 years. Yeah, so, me too. Okay. Yeah. So when you have like that base culture, you know, of people that understand, you know, the culture here, um, then it, you know, it, it's kind of, then when someone new joins and they like, it's funny cause I forget like, you know, cause I get to go to a place that's positive and uplifting and there is no drama and there is no negativity. And that's what, how we run things at results fitness. And then, you know, like I'll have someone say to me like, Oh my gosh, like I, I was out, you know, with some of my friends and I forget how negative people are and how, you know, like they just are, you know, complaining and like, you know, I forget cause you know, whenever I'm here, it's just such a positive environment. And I'm like, yeah, that's what we strive for. And so, I mean, I think it's got to start with, I mean, it's got to start with you, you know, you got to first catch yourself if you want to start to impact the people around you. Um, you can't tell someone one, don't be, you know, don't complain, don't, you know, gossip, don't, and then, you know, turn around and start complaining and gossiping. Yeah. So, yeah. first yeah, of you, all, you, you, tur you turn around and you turn around and you say, Alan, can you believe she was <laughs> gossiping? <laughs> gossiping? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you got to check yourself and see if you're the best example of that. Because if you're not, then, you know, as the, as the leader of Results Fitness, like I have to be the exemplary example of that. Um, and that's not always easy, right? Like it might be hot outside and I might walk in and go, oh man, it's hot outside. And then I'm like, wait, what am I doing? I'm complaining. You know, like that's a complaint. <laughs> and so like, hey, cool, the sun's out. You know, like it's not like, it's, what am I complaining about? Nobody's going to fix that. There's no reason to complain. So, really, you know, first check yourself. Are you, are you the best example of it? And then, um, and then it's just starting to, you know, like as people are in your circle, um, you know, setting that that standard. I think it's, um, and it's, you know, it comes from our coaches. So I have to, when I hire people, make sure that they understand that that's the culture that we create at results fitness. Um, and then absolutely like we have, you know, clients will join and they may be, you know, especially, you know, maybe they start the program and they're like, I'm not losing any weight and things aren't happening fast enough, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, and it's, I always say come from a place of curiosity, you know, like, okay, well, you know, I'm curious, like, what, what did you think was going to happen? Or where, you know, where do you think you were going to be? Um, let's talk about it, you know, like where, what's, you know, what's happening here. And so op opening up that conversation, but, um, and starting to lead them down the path of, well, let's talk about some positive changes. We can do this next week, you know, to start getting you on the path that you want to get on. And so always trying to shift it from, you know, I call it like flipping the conversation, you know, so if someone's going down a road as fast as you can, you know, flip that conversation so that we can, um, you know, stay focused on what can we do or what is, you know, what is the next action step we can take, um, so to I hear, reach. I hear I hear two things from you, and then uh, I also see a right-hand turn to another topic that I would love that's female-centric. Um, so I hear two things for you. You na you navigate that through two things that that I am always preaching about. One, authenticity, and two, communication. So yeah. my educational background is actually in social work. Okay. And so I had to navigate a bunch of social work environments before I got into, well, I was doing bodybuilding on the side and then it took off, but my real job, I was navigating Such all kinds of different cultural milieus, right? Um, from poor native people to marriage counseling to my last job was a life skills counselor for um, long-term incarcerated um, people who were getting released into the public. And I had to navigate between the community wow. and, the, and the halfway house. So okay. I got to be really, really good at communication. So when people yeah. said, what separates you as a coach for physique transformation in the fitness industry? You know, it's not my expertise. It's my communication skills. Because if you yeah. can't impart the message in a way that's uh, internalizable, and embraceable to the client, then it doesn't matter how much you know. So I think that's two things I hear from you. And then the other one, when you use that example of, you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not I'm not losing weight fast enough. 
this is a thing I deal with all the time. I call it unrealistic expectations. So how do you help the client manage expectations in terms of what can we do and are your expectations real? Because oftentimes people come to me and their expectations aren't real. They're sending me an Instagram pic of some <laughs> dieted fitness bunny in her 20s who's getting ready to compete in veins all through her arms and her abs and stuff and obviously on something. And uh, this is this is my ideal body. And they're right. 40, 45 years old. And I'm like, you know what? Good luck with that. Because I can't, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you and take right. your money. And right. then, you know, six months from now, you're, you know, thinking that I failed you because this unrealistic image you have in your head, like you were never going to reach. Um, right. So how do you, do, do you see a lot of that? Do you, how do you manage um. it? Yeah, I mean, I, I ask more questions. So, like, if they bring me a picture like that, like, what is it about? Like, what do you, you know, what, how do you, I try to get to what is the why, right? Like, the deeper why. Because, um, okay. you know, like, how do you, how do you, like, how would, like, looking like this, how would that make you feel, right? Um, like, oh, I, you know, I, well, I feel good about myself. I, okay, well, why do we want to feel good about yourself? Well, because I want my husband to love me. You know, okay, well, why do you want your husband, you know, like, so it's getting into that well because i'm afraid he might leave me as i'm getting older right so like it can get into a deeper conversation of okay now here's why oh, we're yeah. Working, yeah here's why we're working out like we're yeah. not working out to look like that picture we're working out because you're worried that your husband's going to leave you for someone hotter than you like that's why you're working out which <laughs> right is a, which is a horrible yeah. reason to work right out. Like, and now we got like now we got to the the really the deeper why right like okay so now we can talk about um you know looking at let's you know like let's start to you know, look at where we're at and figure out, well, you know, what's the, um, the path we need to go on. It's not even really about looking like this person. It's about you being happy and you being confident with yourself. Um, that's what it's about, you know? And so I think yeah. when a lot of people bring in the surface thing, you know, or whatever the surface thing is that they think they want, um, they haven't really thought through, I mean, and that's an extreme example, but they haven't really thought through, you know, a lot of times it's, um, they want to feel, um, healthy and happy as they age. They've watched their parents, um, you know, go down a path sure. that, you know, weren't able to be independent and weren't able to take care of themselves. And that's my why. Like, I want to be able to, you know, be independent. I want to be able to live on my own. I don't want to have to be in a home. I don't want to, you know, okay, now we can talk, right? Like, now we can talk about making progress because we can do that. Like, we can, you know, that's that's the real why. And, you know, okay, yeah, this picture is to you, you know, what you thought was an example of that. But if we can get into the the real reason, I think that's part of coaching, right? And communication, like you were saying. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, that's the, like they come in with the pictures, like thinking that's the, here's what I'm going to show you because I, you know, that's how I think it looks, you know. Yeah, 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 but yeah. The, there's no finish line. The path right. that that path is right under your feet today. It's not down the road somewhere in some right. someone else's physique. Yeah, uh, but I, what, I know, love that, asking that. Like, what's your why? Like, you know, what's what is your real why? Like, I, you know, I I want to know that from each of the clients. But that can be layered so deep, right? Oh, so deep. Um, and they and won't always is, let you know right away. You got to build trust before they're they They don't know. They don't know. Often. They don't always know. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you bring the thing up about um, living in fear because the um, the the actual headline would be of the example you use living in fear. The example is my husband might leave me. Um, that's just the fear is the is the thing. The husband leaving is the actual example, but the fear right. is what needs to be conquered, right? right? I always say fear is an ugly mistress. It's fear is like having an ugly mistress. It just sucks <laughs> the life out of you, right? Yeah. Uh, but but there's, I mean, there's nothing that. better for a woman to then like start lifting weights and start to, you know, realize her empowerment and realize how strong she is and realize she can do things that her whole life she never thought she could do, you know, and but then she doesn't need the validation of no. someone else, like no. husband or, or whoever. No, 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 yeah. It becomes so a different journey than what, yeah, sometimes it's a different journey than what they thought, that what they thought they came in for, if that makes sense. Yeah. And there's, yeah. there's, there's, uh, I'll, I won't keep you too much longer, but um, <laughs> there's, you mentioned two things that as a sociologists and all that stuff that I, I really divide the fitness industry into two. There's two levels of consciousness that we talk about. One is people that seek stimulation, validation, and attention. And the other is people who seek autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And if we can, can take them from the lower level of consciousness to the deeper level of consciousness where they're exercising and understanding their own autonomy and yeah. mastery and purpose, you know, I always say obsession is not a lifestyle. You know, right. uh, um, 
obsession and mastery are vastly different things. Mastery is when you control and own that thing you do, and obsession is when that thing you do owns and controls you. They're like vastly different worlds, and we got to right. get people on the right track from the get go. And you're, yeah. you're referring to that, but yeah, yeah I get a I mean, lot I, of. Go ahead. I think that's our like, uh, you know, when people come in, it's like. I love hearing because as they become a member of results, they get into this community of people who are supportive. They start to, you know, become a different person. I mean, we literally change the identity of who someone is like, you know, over and over again, people come in one person and then over the, you know, over the time that they're with us now, all of a sudden someone who came in for one reason is now, you know, like when we have one lady who came in because her doctor said, um, you know, you you have to start working out or you're going to have a heart attack, you know, and she was like, I hate exercise and came in and she was, we call her grumpy Sue when she joined because she was like, I don't want to work out. I can't work out. She had, you know, bilateral knee replacements. I'm not going to be able to do anything. And I don't know why I'm even here, but the doctor said I have to be, you know. And so, of course, a fun client to work with as a coach. And you're like, <laughs> okay, let's go. What are we going to do? And so, you know, you obviously figure out some exercises she can do and progress her slowly. And over time, you know, she started to gain strength, started to realize she could do stuff and have success. And and then, you know, she went through like my drop two sizes program, which is a part of that's like, we're not using the scale. We're focusing on like a piece of clothing, you know, that we're going to go ahead and just use that. We want to change your body. We don't want to look at a number on the scale. Um, and she did that, conquered that. And then pretty soon she was like wanting to do a mud run. And then um, now, so then she got into powerlifting. And so this woman who sat at our table and said, I don't want to exercise, got into powerlifting mm-hmm. and she started like powerlifting, loving powerlifting. So she was um, 64 when she joined. Wow. So she's now 72 and she is powerlifting is her sport she loves it she's now a power lifter like when she joined she was not she was <laughs> right exercise. I get yeah, yeah and now she's a power lifter and so she's winning medals you know like power lifting and loving being a power lifter ends up getting a letter that she qualified for the world championships in belarus russia this was um last year or a couple of years ago and so she's like, you guys, like, I qualified for the world championships. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is crazy. You know, who would have thought that you would be our world champion power? Li- like, you're going to go, you know, world championships. And so we end up sending a coach with her to go to Russia. She ends up winning gold medal on the podium, U.S. flag, tear running down her cheek in Russia at the world championships of powerlifting. And it's just like one of those stories that you're like, yeah, this is not the about. same woman that walked in and sat at that table and told us that she hates exercise. And so that that's what we do, right? Like, it's like, as a coach, like, that's our job is to help them to find what, you know, who are they? Who, like, it's someone different. Like, she's a different person. And now she's 72 years old. And she's, so she went this year again to Sweden to the world championships. So she's now like found this whole sport that she's now, you know, going to the world championships and, and comes back and she's like, I got to work on my deadlift. I got to work on this, you know, and it's just like the most amazing thing. And so that's like, that's what I love to see is when people, you know, they come in for one reason, but then, you know, it's a whole different, like who knows what that journey is going to be and who knows, you know, but you just, you have to pull them along at their own speed. And, you know, like as a coach, it's, you know, um, showing them the path and, uh, you know, and, and taking them along that path. And so it's pretty cool to see that, yeah, that, that shift. I mean, that example is like represents two things. One, a truly like a, a true transformative experience, like which very few people have in this. And so that's a, like a true transformative experience. And secondly, it proves it's never too late. Like people right. that come, you know, they failed at weight loss 50 times over right. whatever. Well, maybe 51 is the charm. <laughs> this right? might be like, it. <laughs> yeah, you, you just can't um, give up on yourself. Like, yeah. you know, it's, there's no one can talk you out of that if you've given up on yourself. The best right. coach in the world can't. But like you said, what we can do, I always say the map is not the territory. We can provide the map, but they have to travel the territory. We can provide the path. And then we can, I always, in my book, uh, How to Be a Great Online Coach, I talk about the coach is like a limo driver, right? We, we're, we're taking them along the path, but yeah. it's up to them what they experience along the way and what they witness and what they see and, you know, that kind of stuff. Let, yeah. let me, uh, I don't want to keep you too Let me leave you with one of my ableisms because it reminded me of a, when I was just doing a little research on you. My one of my big pet peeves with the fitness industry is it's driven by what we call in psychology behavior modification, right? Oh, you're doing this, or in the example of that lady, you're not doing anything. You're not so you're you're not doing this. You if you do this, 
these things will happen, which is behavior right. modification. Whereas um, that's a recipe for failure for a, a great majority of the people. So the quote that I've coined is quality of mindset determines quality of behavior in terms of if we help people get their mind right, then they'll just automatically do what is required to get them to this nirvana place they think is so hard to reach. But you can't do that with a head full of bad wiring, right? She comes right. to you, uh, double knee replacement, I can't work out, I don't even know why I'm here, I don't want to die, I have a heart attack, but I can't do this. And you're like, well, okay, let's let's just put that aside for a minute. And right. you know, let's go. What's your reaction? Quality of mindset determines quality of behavior. True, like you know, you know. Oh, we'll yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think absolutely. That's it's mindset is everything. I mean, and that's you know, it's figuring out how do you you know as and that takes time for people to depending exactly. on how how you know negative their mind is and how you know ingrained it is in them. Um, that can take time, you know, and so um, you have to give them enough time. And I do find that for women. Uh, strength training is one of the like game changers for their mindset because they do you know see that they can do things and lift things and do their push, first push up or you know like it's it's a physical thing that they never thought they could do and that can like give them that moment of oh my gosh you know like I, I just did that you know I, I can't believe that right and it's then they start to believe in themselves um, and that's, I think for so many years, women have been told that you can't, you know, you can't do a push up, do a girl push up, you know, you can't do a chin up, just hang from the bar. Um, oh, you can't lift heavy weights. I mean, there's the story of, you know, the woman doing the first marathon, you know, that, um, you know, they, they wouldn't let women do marathons because our uterus was going to fall out or something, you know, like they thought, <laughs> like it was like, we weren't, you know, it's like, oh, we're, we're going to, something's going to happen. Right. And she, there's a woman that snuck in, um, uh, Catherine Switzer snuck into the first marathon. You know this story, I'm sure. No, um, I don't. Oh, she snuck in um, and dressed up as a man, and okay. yeah, and um, and uh, ran the marathon, and um, ended up, you know, doing. They they spotted her. There was a woman in the marathon. Oh dear God! And so they grabbed her, pulled her, pulled her out of the marathon, and like her um, boyfriend or husband that was with her. Um, like ended up like them no leave her alone and uh, so she ended up finishing the marathon. She was the first woman to ever finish the marathon and like show that oh she's fine. <laughs> like her uterus didn't fall out and she's okay. Um, so it's first you know we've been conditioned with this like you can't you can't you can't. Um, so I think just like starting to lift weights and starting to look for what can you do and I think like, everything that we've talked about I keep shifting to well what can we do you know like um, let's let's let that go and let's move to what you can do and that's all about mindset so I think that quote is absolutely on because it's uh, you know if you can get their mind focused on what can I do instead of what I can't do or you know how how do I compare to somebody else or I want to be like that like well no let's just look at what can you do let's look at the next step of you know what can can we get done today um, you know, to get you closer to, to what you want to accomplish. And I think that's the, the biggest shift is in their mind. So um, yeah. it's powerful. Yeah. And, and too often they think they can do it on their own, right? So they're going to buy this diet or they're going to buy that workout program, but they can't get outside their own head. They don't yeah, realize that the quality of their mindset is still, is still not where it needs to be. So the behavior isn't going to change for very long. They go through what I call the honeymoon period, right? And then it all goes to shit again because no one's taught them how to think habits, thoughts are habits too, right? Consistent right. Uh, mindset is a habitual thing we have. Absolutely, so yeah. Until we can coach someone out of um, a disempowering mindset, it doesn't matter how great the program or the diet is because the quality of the mindset that determines the quality of behavior is faulty. Therefore, the behavior is going to be faulty. So yeah. that's, that's you know, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I should like cool to stuff. go with <laughs> yeah, I could talk to you for hours. So same <laughs> thing with your husband, though. So uh, <laughs> thanks for being on the show. If you can think of any other ladies I should have on, I'd, you know, just by all means, email me. Let me know. I want to, uh, you know, um, yeah, I want to get more women on here, you know, talking women stuff. And because um, I think a lot of the times there's a little bit of a reverse double standard as well. When I wrote the book, The Empowered Women, um, You'd be surprised how many emails I got to, from ladies telling me, what the hell do I know about being a woman? <laughs> so it's like, you can't, you know, like, seriously? And I'm like, well, 
you know what? I've worked with hundreds of them yeah. and I've done the research. So I think, you know, I, I, my response to that was, listen, a psychiatrist doesn't have to have schizophrenia in order to treat yeah. schizophrenia, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah. but yeah, no, I mean, the more people, and we'd love to have you back. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, well, I'll see you again, but thanks awesome. for being there. If well, there's any you. parting words, where can people find you? We'll put it in the show notes, but yeah, uh, um, yeah, head over to my, um, I'm on Instagram if anybody's on Instagram. So, uh, Rach Cosgrove, uh, also on Facebook too. So Rachel Cosgrove fan page, and then my website's rachelcosgrove.com. So awesome. Any of those. Great. Well, my best to Alan and thank you again. Thank you. And, uh, hopefully we can do this again. Cause that was great. And I knew that it would great. be. I knew it would be free flowing. I, I don't. I don't have a problem talking to authentic people. It usually just sort of, you know, it's like sitting having a coffee yeah, with someone. Fun. Yeah, all kinds of we went down all kinds of roads. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, I hope yeah. to see you again, and all okay. the best. Okay. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Cheers.